Good afternoon. I'm Jim and welcome to the Alternative Energy Hut in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. I'm starting a series today, uh, the Alternative Energy Hut, sponsored by Thermoamp Thermoelectric Generators. We're going to have some fun here with this building, trying to make it completely alternative energy powered. Let's go on inside and uh, take a look at what we are inside the Alternative Energy Hut. I've got a nice fire going in the uh, wood stove. This is a Fisher Mama Bear replica uh, wood stove. A family member made it some number of years ago. And uh, it's really creating the heat and feels great. I love a wood stove. I love the heat from a wood stove. I've got a, you know, uh, access to uh, dead and down on my own property and uh, I like a way to use it. It's uh, cheap. A uh, cheap source of heat if you're willing to do the work to bring the wood in. Uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. Okay, so it is making a lot of heat and what we want to do here is we want to figure out a way to maximize on that. Now, like I say, I built this building in order to house this wood stove because the heat source in my home is radiant floor heating. And that's when you run tubes in a slab and then run hot water through them and the hot water transfers its heat into the slab, which is thermal mass, and then radiates it into the room. It's a great heat. It's, uh, it's not dry. It's, it's everywhere, but you can't figure out where it's coming from. The floor is always warm for your feet in the morning. But the drawback on it is, is it's very expensive. Uh, like most heating systems that use gas or electric, they, they, they cost money. And, uh, it is quite expensive. So what we want to do here, and why we built the building again, was to heat the water with the wood stove, uh, pipe it into the home. Now I've already got all my pipes and everything in place. Now I'm, I've not done this yet, uh, and there's probably different ways to do it. I'm going to look into the different ways, and uh, we're probably going to experiment with several of them on future episodes. So uh, all things being equal, that's probably one of the best uses a wood stove can can uh, produce is uh, hot water for domestic and for uh, radiant floor heating as well as just the fantastic heat coming off of it now what we want to do is we want to maximize on this heat is here it's it's more than what we need especially in this room uh, which is it, it'll overheat it really quick so what we want to do is we want to be able to take that heat and transfer it and utilize it in as many ways as is possible. So one of the things, of course, you can do uh, besides just make heat is you can cook with a wood stove. Now I bought this uh, sometime back on Craigslist. It's uh, kind of like an antique. It's a wood stove oven and uh, you probably can't see inside of it, uh, but it has a shelf in here and uh, has a thermometer on the door and uh, damper here on the top that opens and closes helps you to control the amount of heat inside the box. In future episodes, uh, or in a future episode, uh, we're going to try to break some, make some bread or uh, make some cookies. Uh, I'm going to get my wife in on that and uh, see if we can't have a little fun there as well. Now, of course, you can always just put a pan right on the surface there of the wood stove and cook and uh, cook whatever you can in a pan. So uh, we wanted to have the security of a wood stove knowing that if the power went out or if it just cost too much, uh, we would be able to cook and heat water and stay warm based on going out and getting some wood and bringing it on in. So uh, one of the main things that we want to do with our wood stove besides cooking and basically heat and domestic hot water and hot water for heating purposes is uh, thermoelectric power generation. Now this is a uh, thermoelectric module and it's the backbone of the thermoelectric power generator and uh, I melted this particular one while doing an experiment with a blowtorch and a cooling source. The cover came off and there was another wire that came out of here that uh, I haven't soldered back on yet uh, after that incident. So what we have here is, I'll show it to you up close, is got like a little grid inside here. Very simple. 
One's one kind of semiconductor and the next one's a different kind of semiconductor. And as heat passes through these, uh, out comes an electric charge on the other side. Well, that's really neat stuff. Uh, solid state. Uh, I'm told that these chips will last for an indefinite period of time, uh, tens of thousands of hours. And uh, so no moving parts. How cool is that? Okay, so another uh, application for the thermoelectric module is uh, the thermoelectric cooler, the travel cooler. You plug it into the 12 volt socket on your in your car, and uh, it uh, cools your food uh, without you know ice or whatever. It's just like an ice cooler, but instead it's a thermoelectric cooler. Okay, so how that works is is there should be another lead here, like I say. You put power, a small amount of power, into the thermoelectric module and one side of the module becomes cold and the other side of the module becomes hot. Now, if you remove heat, pull heat away from the hot side, the cold side gets colder. And that's how cooling is uh, established. And on the flip side of that, these coolers are oftentimes warmers as well, just flip of a switch. So if you remove the cold from the cold side, the hot side gets hotter and thus warms your uh, cooler dash warmer. So it's really neat that this operates uh, in so many different, it's so versatile, it operates in many different ways. Uh, now, as far as the thermoelectric power generation goes, on a wood stove, let's say, uh, if you don't apply electricity, but instead apply heat to one side and cool the other, then the difference between the temperatures of the cool side and hot side is what's producing the power uh, in that case. So let's uh, as an example, let's say the wood stove is 500 degrees uh, on the surface and uh, it's say 300 degrees is the air being sucked into it. So that's a net difference of 200 degrees. Uh, that 200 degree difference is well enough to make uh, all the power that a generator could be making. Uh, it actually could be less than that. So that's the concept uh, behind thermoelectric power. Uh, let's take a look at the generator itself. Here's a 8 watt model. It's about 5 pounds. You can see it has a 12 volt plug and a USB plug on it. And uh, the only moving part in this is a muffin fan that uh, sits on the top and that sucks the air down onto the cool side uh, and, and cools it. Okay, that, like I say, that's the only moving part in a thermoelectric generator. Now, you saw the thermoelectric module, and it's kind of hard to see, but you see those white strips in there. That, uh, those are the thermoelectric modules. Uh, okay, so what we have here is we have a heat sink on the bottom. Now that collects the heat, and uh, then uh, you can see above that is the thermoelectric module and then above that uh, there's another heat sink that uh, is radiating the heat on the cool side uh, that keeps it cool. Uh, so anyway, it's very simple. That's how it works. Uh, let's take a look at the other one. Again, that was the 8 watt model. Now this one is the 30 watt model. And as you can see, it has uh, two fans on it. And looking in there, you see that strip of white in there? Those are thermoelectric modules, and they're substantially larger than the ones I showed you a moment ago. This is the 30 watt unit, and uh, they're so much larger because they're producing more power. So there's four of them inside of this particular unit. And uh, again, it's uh, very simple. These, uh, these here are voltage regulators, and very, very simple. Now this model is portable. It's quite a bit heavier though, probably about three times as heavy as the other one. So this is as simple as put it on the wood stove or any other high temperature heat source, and it's going to make power. There's no complicated uh, thing. Anybody could do it.
Okay, it's as simple as that. And now, uh, what we do is we wait for a little bit and turn the heat up on it some. And in just a couple minutes, it should uh, be making power. It's an incredible uh, invention. Okay, the fans are beginning to spin. Take some minute to for them to build up enough power to get started. And once they do, we give it a few minutes and it'll be making the power that we're going to use. Okay, it looks like they both started up. We're going to give it a couple minutes. Okay, the generator uh, is up to full power, producing power. Uh, for this demonstration, we're just going to keep this demonstration real short and simple, just to show the ease of use of set it on the heat source, wait for a few minutes, and then uh, plug in what you want to power. Okay, so uh, we'll start with this uh, flashlight. This is a 33 LED flashlight, I believe, and uh, it does have a rechargeable battery. The power is on right now. I've run the battery down so that uh, for the sake of this demonstration be able to see. Now, uh, if it just charges for a few minutes, then uh, it stays powered for quite some time following. So, <clears throat> I have run it down so that you can see the difference. So I'll go ahead and plug that on in. Okay. It's pretty bright. It's uh, hard to tell during the daytime, but it is uh, producing an awful lot of light. These LEDs are very bright. You should in fact, they're so bright you shouldn't even look directly at them. Uh, so we have another LED light. This one plugs into a USB. This uh, unit here is a 4-port USB uh, extender. or uh, it makes one USB port turn into four. Now this is not included with the uh, any of the generators, but you can pick one up at just about anywhere. I'm going to plug that on into there. Let's see if we have some extra light like that. Then we'll see if we can uh, make this uh, cell phone here recharge as well. Okay, the cell phone's recharging. Alright, well, I hope you're able to see that, uh, that it's recharging, but cell phone's recharging and charging two lights. And there's plenty of power to go around with this particular unit. This is a 30 watt unit, so it's uh, one of our larger units. And uh, able to power more than this, but for the sake of this demonstration, uh, that's, uh, that's what I wanted to show you. Okay, this is really neat stuff. This is cutting edge, uh, brand new, new energy. Uh, if you're burning a wood stove already, you might as well be getting the most out of it that you can. Uh, is energy, is potential energy, is there, is for the taking. So uh, this is a completely new, it's a quantum leap forward, and uh, it's not new to, uh, in general, it's just actually been around for quite some time, been used by uh, industry and military and uh, even the space program. But now it's finally reached the consumer market and uh, is here and available for you. Uh, and for your alternative energy needs. Okay, so uh, we appreciate you watching today. I uh, look forward to future episodes where we're going to look into everything alternative energy. We're going to make this building uh, grid independent, off-grid we'll call it. Alright, so uh, that's going to be an awful lot of fun. All things alternative energy, all things uh, energy saving, uh, uses for a thermal electric generator and Highlighting the wood stove is a major source of power. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode, and I hope that you'll come and visit us at thermalwamp.com, uh, which is our website, and uh, maybe you'd like to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Thermal Wamp. Uh, please do, and leave all the comments uh, or questions uh, that you wish. We'll, uh, we'll uh, start a discussion on this matter. And uh, you can also visit us on Facebook. And uh, we're at thermoamp, comma, I-N-C. And uh, you can go to our page. If you like what you see, then uh, like it. And uh, comment and share. Uh, share this video. 
get it around because everybody really does need to know that there are other alternatives uh, available for alternative energy. And like I say, we're going to look at everything alternative energy, from solar panels to windmills, thermoelectric generators, because uh, when you're working with alternative energy and trying to get off the grid, you need as many sources of energy as possible. Uh, you might need to make energy at night, which is where the thermoelectric generator comes in, or during the winter when there's not as much sun. So uh, it's all a puzzle, and we're going to put the pieces together right here, and we're very excited. Hope to see you soon. Thanks.